Hi, I'm Nathan Cruz and welcome once again to Inside the Toy Room. Welcome once again to this channel. If you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel, hit the little bell so you're notified every single time that we upload here on Inside the Toy Room. And today it's actually a requested video. We've been asked to give a tour of the toy room. Now recently I had a little reshuffle and a redesign of everything. I've mentioned that on the channel that I was basically running out of space. I decided to part ways with a few things, got a few new additions of course and then yeah just change things around so that I felt like everything was actually getting displayed quite nicely it's still very cramped in here I'd say that we're at capacity but what I was able to do was leave a couple blank spaces for one or two things that I still want to add to the collection or complete certain collections i.e Batman and Robin 1997 of course but anyway enough of that Let's get into the tour and let's start as soon as you walk into the toy room. The first thing that you see as you walk in, other than this massive Marvel display on the right, is the bookshelf, which I handmade myself, by the way, man of many talents. On the top, it's just kind of a few of my favourite pieces from here. This incredible statue of Batman fighting Killer Croc, which I absolutely love. Green Lantern's Lantern, of course. This little statue of Incredible Hulk, Barbarian Hulk, Mr. Sinister, The Thing. Got the Avengers down here and a few of my favourite comic books. There's no theme here. These are just some of my favourite things that I have in the toy room that I felt looked really cool. <laughs> Next shelf down is the Venom shelf. Venom, as I've mentioned on this channel, is one of my favourite characters. Is probably my favourite villain from comic books and um, I just wanted to give him his own shelf. These are a few other Venom items in this toy room that I haven't put on that shelf. That's just because I wanted them to be part of their own individual collection. But there's one or two pieces. There's the mug. There's this big diamond select stack you. There's a money bank, there's a couple of Marvel Legends and I don't have the rest of the series to go with those things or some of them are just standalone pieces so I just wanted to give that shelf its own little shelf and then the one below probably one of my favorite shelves in here is the small soldiers shelf now small soldiers was actually our first episode here on inside the toy room which we did way back in like march of 2020 prior to the pandemic actually our most popular video on our inside the toy room don't know what that says for our youtube views but there you are then but yeah this is definitely one of my favorite shelves just because something i've always wanted was the entire set of the commando elite whether it be in box or out of box now i have them all in box chip hazard of course the leader brick bazooka nick nitro and with the creme de la creme and that is kip killigan or battle changing kip and now i i I spoke about that on that episode and if you want to check that out the link is right here it's definitely an interesting watch let's put it that way I am still waiting Hasbro in the meantime are re-releasing a lot of toys but they're not re-releasing small soldiers and I really really want them to because I really want Butch Meat Hook and Link Static so if anybody can tweet Hasbro because I don't bother with Twitter anymore if anybody can contact Hasbro and say check this out because this guy would definitely buy them I will definitely buy a re-release of all of the Commando Elite, but I really, really want Butch Meat Hook and Link Static. Also, you've got Loose, I've got Archer and an Insaniac and a Loose Chip Hazard and a Loose Brick Bazooka. I liked having the Loose Brick Bazooka just because in his box, he doesn't have the bazooka flipped over his head and I wanted to display that. Anyways, let's move on. So here on the right hand side is all my Marvel stuff. And I'd, I love this wall just for the, the best of color. There's so much going on. This wall is very much like a comic book come to life to me starting from the top you've got all the marvel selects now i've mentioned before how much i love the marvel select collection if i was to part ways with everything in the toy room and decide i'm just going to concentrate on one thing i think marvel select would be the one that i would just concentrate on starting from the top we've got the comic book version of thanos one of my favorite villains from the marvel universe dr doom right next to him we've got anti-venom then carnage the second venom that they released in the marvel select series i just love this one i recently covered that in our halloween special where we talked about Venom's toy history and if you want to check that out the link is right here or you can check on the playlist right after this video. The very first Marvel Select I ever got purchased for my 25th birthday by Matt Myers, the Incredible Hulk, Red Hulk right next to him, Barbarian Hulk which I absolutely love so much so that I've got another one out of its box and then Gladiator Hulk from Thor Ragnarok and that's actually the only one that I have from the Marvel movies and simply because I prefer these all to be true to the comic books and the movies but I just love that look in Thor Ragnarok I actually really love Thor Ragnarok as a film in total sticking with Hulk 
to start the Marvel Selects, we've got some of the Hulk series. Now, I was looking at getting these and then I swiftly decided against it when I saw how much they were going for now. About 50, 60 pounds a piece, mint in box, some of them well into the hundreds. But I wanted one Incredible Hulk just because he's one of my favourite Marvel characters. So I started out with this Smash and Crash. I love that name love toy biz he's just in his true hulk form the purple shorts the cool accessories cool box artwork but yeah that's kind of what starts that marvel section off and then you go into the x-men and obviously x-men have got so many action figures to choose from i'm nowhere near complete on this collection but if i'm completely honest i'm very happy with what i've got it's missing one character that i really want to get my hands on and that's professor xavier of course how can i have all the x-men and not have professor xavier so i'm hoping to get that added to to the collection but in the meantime wolverine was one of my favorites from the tv series but i also love the villains i loved apocalypse so i've got apocalypse there i've got two versions of cyclops two versions of storm got apocalypse versus bishop bishop is my favorite time traveling mutant this strong guy saber tooth there's a lot of x-men figures as i mentioned and i'm happy with the collection that i've got so far moving on spider-man now the spider-man collection again just for the artwork is one of my favorites in here it's complemented by the daily bugle playset right here which i recently got for my birthday for my mum <laughs> anyway going into the toys probably my favorite actually out of this entire series and i really wanted in display is that green goblin in regards to action figures i just love it i love the color it comes with the goblin glider it comes with the pumpkins i just i really need to add the hobgoblin to it but that's been very difficult to try and find but for right now i really love that moving on you've got carnage venom then we've got octo spidey web cannon spidey lizard kingpin smythe web parachute spider-man camera accessory Peter Parker, Super Web Shield Spider-Man. But sticking with Spider-Man, going back to the Planet of the Symbiotes collection, I absolutely love these. And I've mentioned these on the channel before. Center has to be Venom, obviously. He's the OG of the Symbiotes. Riot, Scream, the female Symbiote. You've got Hybrid and Lasher. Now this isn't a complete set. I've mentioned before about Venom the Madness in green, and I'm sure there's a different version of Lasher and another version of Hybrid out there. I love this. This is something, I just love the artwork on them. And again, it just grabs your attention the action figures themselves they're so big and they've got so much going on with all the symbiote tentacles coming off it they all come with these cool little accessories i really love these in the collection then right at the top i've got all my 10 inch figures now i of course i haven't got the complete set of any of the spider-mans or x-men and there's a few that i do want to add but starting from the top you've got cyclops rogue then Wolverine and then right behind him my favorite villain from the X-Men Mr. Sinister I had to have him in 10 inch form now this is Blaze from Ghost Rider now I never watched Ghost Rider as a kid I've not even watched the film I bought this because I loved the the box artwork that was legit it was going at a really cheap price on eBay and I couldn't believe how immaculate the condition of this box was I just thought it'd be a really cool thing to add to the collection now behind that is the Marvel Universe version of Spider-Man I've covered that in a previous episode as well and then we go back to the spider-man collection starting with spider-man himself then into venom favorite villain carnage and the one that i really love i still feel he isn't getting displayed as well as he should but dr octopus and again i've covered this in a previous episode but what i love so much about this is just those colors i think that's what i like mostly about all the spider-man collection to be honest is how bold the colors are and probably x-men they're all inspired by that jim lee style of animation at the time that was done in the comic books and the tv series so yeah this is something really cool and that moves us right into power rangers which of course is like for anybody who grew up as a child in the 90s is probably like so many memories comes back and power rangers mighty morphin power rangers the original series is something that i'm still very fond of to these days i can still watch those episodes and have fall back into nostalgia lane oh, and we start here with the power blaster set it's all the original five rangers all there individual weapons that they had to combine to create the power blast there if they didn't have the megazord i'm a big green ranger fan and green rangers obviously dominating this a lot but at the top here i couldn't fit all of my green ranger stuff on one shelf to the right of me to the left for you is this small metals version of green ranger i got this as a gift from a referee and a student and good friend of mine to be fair called scott he got me this one christmas and what i loved so much about this because i'm not i don't normally keep a lot of the newer stuff but what i loved so much about this was just how true that green ranger color was that's something that you don't often get on the action figures they just go for a generic green but green ranger has his own 
I call it Green Ranger Green and they've got this right on this action figure and I'll, I just like having that in the set. Right next to it is the White Tiger Zord which of course was Tommy Oliver's next Zord and then this giant Dragon Zord. Now this is a remote control Dragon Zord, I haven't played with it in a while, need to replace the batteries in the remote control because yeah I do actually really enjoy just smashing this around the house, getting Pepper to chase it, it's cool. Next to that is the Ultra Zord. Now I've covered assembling this together, this was like a, a childhood dream come true because I never had it as a kid. I had a few of the Zords, but I never had enough. To, I never had Titanus. I could never complete it. So to have Ultra Zord now is so cool. Above that is some really special things to me. Now, firstly, the only original flip head that I have in the box had to be Green Ranger. It was actually gifted to me by, by a fan from Germany by the name of Michael and it was really cool because he was a fan of mine for my wrestling career and then when we started doing this channel just so happened that he was also into toy collecting and he had a spare Green Ranger flip head sent me it over. That means a lot to me, it's very special to me and speaking of special, right next to it, I have a friend in the wrestling industry by the name of Steve Linsky who was a senior referee. Let's just say Steve knows a lot of famous people and he isn't shy about sharing those <laughs> names and winding me up about it. One of those famous people that he happens to know is Jason David Frank, who of course played Tommy Oliver in the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers TV series. And he was at a Comic Con with him, told him that he knows this wrestler, who is still a big Green Ranger fan. He got me this. I just showed up at a show one day. He was like, I've got something for you. And there it is, two Nathan, Jason David Frank, autographed picture of the Green Ranger. It's just so cool. And I, I really do appreciate that so thank you steve sticking to power rangers though let's move on to the next shelf down this is probably the thing that means the most to me in this toy room the green ranger helmet Gemma got me this our first christmas together she was on the fast track to marry me at that point i absolutely love this yeah i'm probably going to be buried in this right next to it <laughs> Nobody wants to see a decomposing face anyways, just stick that on my head. Right next to it is the Legacy Dragon Zord. I wanted this so bad just because of how show accurate it was and also because I've got the original Dragon Zord in with the Ultra Zord up there, I can't really display it, so now I can display both. I love the detail on it, I love the gold on it. Right next to it, SH Figure Arts Green Ranger. Now, the SH Figure Arts are so good with the detail of these and originally I wanted to collect the whole set of the Power Rangers as I do have the Red Ranger down here, but as Time went on and I kept putting it off to get other things. Or I had other stuff going on in my life. The cost of these SH figure arts went up and up and up and up. I really, really, really wish I'd got hold of the Black Ranger with a Green Ranger shield on it when I had chance. I remember seeing it for about £25 on eBay at one point. And yeah, I'd be very, very lucky if I was to find it for that price these days. Moving on, Toys R Us exclusive when they re-released a lot of these uh, Power Ranger figures. A throwback to those original 9-inch figures that have just been downscaled a bit. Sticking with those 9-inch figures though, there is the Green Ranger. The one that actually came with the Dragon Zord. If you bought the one that I had, you get Dragon Zord and you get this 9 inch Green Ranger figure in the same box with it. An exclusive from San Diego Comic Con I think this year was this Lord Dragon in Evolution Stage 3. <sighs> I really like this. I love Lord Draken. I've read The Shattered Grid. In fact, that comic book is right here. And I just love the evolution of the character, how he kept changing as he got more power. And then when they released this, again, I'm not one for buying modern toys. I'm into the OG stuff. This kind of blew me away, so I really wanted to add this to the collection. My favourite Megazord is the Thunder Megazord. As much as I love that original, that Thunder Megazord for me was just, I remember as a kid thinking, oh my God, it's even better than before. And it was. And it, the the original Thunder Mega Zord that I had as a kid was probably my favourite Zord that I ever played with. I sold it on that goddamn jumble sale. But then one year, for my birthday, Gemma surprised me with this. This is the Legacy re-release, which is far more show accurate. It's got these beautiful bits of gold, much like the Dragon Zord. One of my favourite pieces in here, just because it brings me back to my childhood. Gem got me it. This shelf in general, to be fair, one of my favourite focal points of the toy room because it's got so much going on. It's got so much colour. You've got the original six Power Ranger flip heads here out of their box. Just behind that, you've got Saba, the White Ranger that comes with the White Tiger Zord, the Metallic Red Ranger, Metallic Metallic Blue Ranger, the original Red Dragon Thunder Zord, Falcon Zord, this little yellow ranger that I have, Jason with the Green Ranger shield and dagger again from the Toys R Us re-release and Lord Zed. Moving down from Power Rangers Megaforce, this awesome Green Ranger, again wish I could have it with a Green Ranger collection but this is kind of busy traffic up here. So I moved it down here again with another Green Ranger. We've got the Gold Ranger from Zio, another Lord Draken in his first evolution stage, Goldar and in front of Goldar Ninja. I mean, this is the only 
Power Ranger toy that I had left from my childhood because nobody wanted to buy Ninja. <laughs> An original Morpher and then right next to it the Legacy re-release. The power gun that turns into a dagger type of thing. This just kind of came with a big bundle of Power Rangers stuff that was gifted to me by a student of mine. It's a Power Rangers weapon. And speaking of Power Rangers weapons, this. Zeo was the last thing of Power Rangers that I was watching after Mighty Morphin. I remember when it turned to Turbo, I was like, no, that's it, I'm done. That's it, I'm, I'm moving on. But the, the whole thing of the Gold Ranger and then it ending up being Jason as well, which was a throwback to the original Mighty Morphin, that was awesome. And then, yeah, one birthday, Matt Meyer surprised me with this. This is the legacy version of the Gold Ranger staff. So unfortunately, even though it isn't on massive display, but if you walk around and have a look, you, it's pretty much well displayed here. You can see it as soon as you walk onto it. And that leads us into my comic book collection. I'm not just a big toy geek. I love a lot of where these, these toys were inspired from, and that's the comic books. And in my late teens, that's when I started getting into comics. As much as I'm a big Batman fan, like Batman's my favorite superhero, Marvel have some really good stories i can't deny it starting here these are all of my marvel collections here and then moving along we've got some loose issue marvels and then into some dc stuff if you are a fan of comic books particularly dc i'd really advise this this is a green lantern rise of the third army it's an incredible read. It's got so much going on. You'll see so many of your favorite DC superheroes in it. I strongly advise reading this one. One of the main motivations for me when I was redesigning this toy room was my Godzilla collection just isn't getting displayed. And if there was one thing that kind of defined me as a kid other than professional wrestling, was Godzilla. I was the only kid who really watched Japanese Godzilla films. There was other people that may have enjoyed it, but I was like big into Godzilla. Like there was nothing else outside of wrestling really that I cared about. Obviously Batman films, but I was so into Godzilla films. I thought it was the greatest thing ever. When I was redesigning this toy room, I really had this section in mind. So starting right at the very top, this here is one of the NECA Godzillas. This is from King of the Monsters. Matt Myers again got me that. Moving along, there's Rodan. I didn't have a Rodan, Lucas Steele got me that as a Christmas gift and I really was happy with that. Again, it was another thing that wasn't getting displayed well in this toy room and it was kind of gutting to me. And then sticking with NECA, moving down here, this is definitely one of my favourite Godzilla figures in here. I got this result for my birthday for my mother-in-law. Now when Godzilla was released to a Western audience in America in 1956, they had to change a bunch of things in it because they didn't like how it displayed <laughs> basically what America had done to Japan, which was, that was the whole point of Godzilla it was a metaphor for nuclear war so they kind of changed things and this is a rip-off of that poster because it was in black and white and so it was kind of up to interpretation what Godzilla looked like and they decided to have him green I kind of like the idea of Godzilla being green but I love this this action figure is a complete rip-off of that poster even down to the yellow radioactive breath which of course Godzilla has that trademark blue but this was really cool and I absolutely love this this takes a, a very proud position here in the toy room Godzilla banner from the original 2014 film which i managed to acquire from tesco for free going into this now these are these are the big boys right these are all the massive figures that i've got we've got this hand puppet zilla which was one of the first things that i ever got in my when i was a kid of my godzilla collection i love this there's a lot of rubber action figures actually up here we've got that rubber king Ghidorah, that horrible raw that we had in that video but again one of the main things that i loved about this was the box artwork like i really was impressed with the fact that it came with that next to it is a much more detailed destroyer that still works and it came as a twin pack it came with this Godzilla. This is my favorite Godzilla in my collection just because when I think of Godzilla, I think of that Heisei era, which was the 90s era of Godzilla from Japan, not to be mistaken with the Sony TriStar remake. That is what Godzilla looks like to me. I really wish that that one still walked and roared, but unfortunately electrics in it are fried. But the destroyer still has the sounds and its wings still move, which is really cool. With that, there's this massive Zilla. I remember saving my pocket money. It must have been two months to afford that as a kid it's basically just glued together now just because so many parts of it fell off the tail one of the legs one of the arms it's almost a model now but the sound's still working it which is really cool now when i first started diving into toy collecting in my younger years which was around 2004 one of the first things i wanted to focus on was a lot of the original godzilla figures we couldn't get japanese godzilla style figures in england just you had a small section in toys r us that may be there they might not be there so when i got on the internet I was like okay found this awesome website and i was able to now a lot of these are from the early 2000s 
there's this bear in Godzilla. We've got a version of Godzilla from 1954. This right here is one of my favourites. This is from Godzilla vs Mechagodzilla. I just love that look of Godzilla. It might be the silver dorsal fins, but I think it's really cool. Again, another version of the Heisei era Godzilla. Another Neca Godzilla. Matt Myers got me that one, one Christmas. It was in its box, but because of the radioactive ray like reflecting on his torso, I really wanted to uh, take that out of the box and display it. And I had these old model buildings that I just decided to put around as I was blasting them up. Got this smaller Godzilla. Again, these were some of the ones that you could actually find in Toys R Us that would come with a twin pack with either mecha godzilla which is right here or batra right there and then i think i think it was actually this godzilla this little miniature one that came with a mecha godzilla and that one that came with batra behind that you've got a godzilla money box it's mecha godzilla which gem got me this as a little gift for christmas and she was gutted by how small it was i just loved it that's mecha godzilla that. look how evil he looks that's what I love about the original Mechagodzilla, it looks evil. Sticking with Mechagodzilla, this is Kairu, this is the 2003 version of Mechagodzilla. You've got Godzilla Jr., a couple of Godzilla comic books, Space Godzilla, Mothra, Anguirus, of course the first villain that Godzilla had. Further down, Zilla, like it or not, was what made me fall in love with Godzilla. It was the first film that I got to see at the cinema. Everything else I'd just seen reruns on Channel 4. There's a lot of, of this old school merch that I had as a kid that I never parted ways with, it just went to a box and went in my loft i love this is this little mug just because of the detail on it it's more detailed than some of the action figures good on you equity toys now as i mentioned if there's one other big interest i had as a kid other than professional wrestling and godzilla it was batman batman's my favorite superhero there's a lot of things that i didn't part ways with as a kid from batman and a lot of those are of course i never kept them in the box as a kid down here at the very bottom we've got a lot of those loose action figures that i kept some of those models that i've managed to get over the years is this cool one that came with my arkham city collector's edition on playstation 3 there's a batman money box bubble baths from batman forever there's a cool batman vault which is a really cool like walk through history of all the media of batman over the years moving up an arkham escape game these were the original mcdonald's collectibles glasses for the batman forever film i've got all batman Robin, Riddler and Two-Face. Two-Face is my favourite. I don't know if, it's, if you can see this on the camera, but what I love so much about it is Two-Face here smiling, flicking the coin and the coin continues into the handle here that's some really cool artwork and i really like that and as we move along this is kind of the thing that started me really really getting into toy collecting was batman and robin i don't know it's a bad film but it's a great great toy collection this is the thing that i really started committing to getting things mint in the box and wanted to display this collection's coming on very nicely it's almost complete for me got the guardians of gotham city where they're in their final suits that you see at the end of that film challenges of the night which is the same suits but they're in like metallic green for robin and metallic blue for batman God, i love the idea of a metallic green robin suit i don't know why cold night in gotham which is actually the rarest of the twin pack collections and then moving further down you've got batman against bane and then you've got a robin against poison ivy which are two of the more very popular ones that you can get your hold off the middle a lot of units of that a deluxe batman i need to add a deluxe robin to the collection moving down and stick with the batman figures heat scan batman ice blade batman wing blast batman ambush attack batman battle gear bruce wayne where you get to change bruce wayne from bruce wayne to batman they basically did these all all these toys i started looking into these are exactly the same in batman forever they've just tweaked the color usual kenner stuff same toys different packaging different paint job razor skate robin but again he's not in his mask it can be very much dick grayson in there ice board robin which i love because he's in his actual film accurate suit there moving down we've got batgirl and then we've got batgirl on her bat bike i couldn't find an english version of this and i really wanted to add this to the collection as i've got the other vehicles down below as you can see the original batmobile from 1997 which is my favorite batmobile of all time the bat hammer got the jet blade some of the play sets which we've covered recently on here and going back to the toys above we've got deluxe version of mr freeze another version of mr freeze frostbite his henchman poison Ivy, and bane before we're going actually into the batman animated series a little side story there were some accidents when i was moving 
moving things around in the toy room and originally a lot of this Batman stuff was on this bookshelf which was there. There was a lot of clutter in here and my Harlequin statue came tumbling down and it was in pieces. Now Gorilla Glue as good as it is has held everything together but for some reason the head just won't bond with it and I'm absolutely devastated about it. If anybody's got any suggestions on what else I could try to use to make that repair please let me know in the comment section below because every time I come to this toy room since that's happened it just breaks my heart. Going on to Batman the animated series which I've mentioned on this channel is my favourite piece of Batman media. I had to have a lot of these toys because I probably my first vivid memories of Batman is probably from this or the 60s show. Three versions of the Joker we've obviously got the ones from the Adventures of Batman and Robin which was a bit later in the series. Pogo Stick Joker. In fact you can check out all my Joker stuff on our more recent Halloween special where I covered the Joker and all of his action figures. Man Bat which I've got the re-release version right down there which we'll get to in a minute because there's another animated series section. Penguin, Mr. Freeze, Two-Face and then this really cool Batman which so nice Batman. I loved that action figure as a kid. I remember where I got it from. It was in Quicksafe and so when I started getting this collection together it was something that I wanted to add to it. A bit further down you've got the DC Collectibles which was released in 2015 which focused on the Batman animated series and the new adventures of Batman and Robin or the new Batman adventures as it ended up getting renamed. Again I just love these just because of the detail on them and that brings us nicely into the rest of the animated series collection down here which has got this giant Batmobile which Matt Myers again got me. I love it. Put the batteries in it, turn all the power on. It's got all these cool little lights and so does the Batcave which Jem got me. So this is a really cool little section. The original version of that Batmobile from 1993. Some of those other Batman animated series vehicles which are just outrageous and then as you move up more from the animated series. I love those busts. Joker. They've got those two versions of Catwoman. One in the noir and one in the colour. That giant Batwing from the Mad Love episode. There's a comic book collectible thing there. Batman and his bike. That packed lunchbox which I had as a kid. Got Two-Face in the, the busts. Two-Face is one of my favourite characters. Mask of Phantasm. This 10 inch version of Batman which has light up eyes and a chest. Moving up we've got some of the 60s stuff. I remember there was a sale in Toys R Us once. I think it was when it was actually closing down so I went in and got a bunch of stuff for cheap. Some of these Power Rangers and they had this massive 60s version of Batmobile. I just wanted that 60s Batmobile to add to the collection. Matt Myers got me that Adam West version of Batman to go with it and it looks really cool there. We've got the Batwing from Batman Forever. Moving up, some of the statues here. There's a Diamond Select version of Batman. He stood on that traditional gargoyle overlooking Gotham City. Looks aggressive. The cape looks really good. In the slap bang in the centre from the Arkham Origins game, there was this awesome statue of Batman stood above Gotham City. When you put batteries in that, that all lights up. Gem got me that. Absolutely love it. From Batman Metals, again, it's a Diamond Select version of Batman Metals. Now, one of my favourite toy series from Batman from Kenner was Legends of the Dark Knight. Now these two in particular I love. Now down here I've got a Batgirl and I've got a Bane. But the ones that I love the most are these here. They are incredible. The all black Batman suit and then right next to it the blue and grey. I love Batman with a blue cape. Don't know why, just do. These action figures are awesome. I'm so tempted to get them again. Loose probably to display here just because I just love how they look. Right at the top some of the, my favourite comic books from the Killing Joke Collector's Edition. I covered that recently on the Joker episode. Long Halloween, Court of Owls with a mask. Death of the Family, again, where Joker cuts his own face off, skins himself, then staples his face back to it. It's, it's bizarre, it's really dark. Of course, what's dominating this area is this Batwing. Now, going back to how things light up, such as the Batmobile and the Batcave, Jem got me this incredible Batman animated series, Batwing. I have palpitations every night while laying in bed that I'm gonna hear a big crash. This is gonna come down from the ceiling. It was originally hanging here, and then when I redesigned this toy room, I moved it there, and I wanted it facing. So as you come in, you, you would see it. But for some reason, these cables just had a different idea and turned the bat. It was just so annoying to me but it took me so long to get it up there safely I was like you know what it's just staying like that I don't mind it because at least from my perspective when I'm delivering these episodes to you I can see it it looks really cool and if you're actually looking at that Batman collection from this standpoint here which is how you would view it it makes perfect sense for it to be facing it I guess so you know maybe fate was in my hands there just above the Batman and Robin scale electric set is my Eagle Moss collection of the Batman chess set this was months and months of collecting 
issue after issue all these pieces are made of solid resin they're some of the most delicate pieces in here unfortunately some of them have had a couple of little accidents i've had to repair it's a nightmare to keep clean to dust this is a pain but i love it this giant version of christian bale's batman from the dark knight from the second film and just behind him fans of big bang theory may recognize that lunchbox godzilla blu-rays above that super wheelie power legends of batman i found this at a comic con i used to have it as a kid and sticking with batman and going right back to the bookshelf right down here some of the vehicles down there are just bizarre they're just cool and i couldn't get them all on that shelf so i decided to move some of the 60s ones such as the boat and the weird catwoman car over to where the 60s batmobile is and bring us right to the finish of this toy room tour at the top i never actually dove into teenage mutant ninja tales i didn't want to start diving into those original action figures because i knew it would be a rabbit hole that would cost me a lot of money but when they had these re-releases come out in 2014 i wanted to get the at least the original four because i remembered watching the cartoon and i enjoyed it and i've read a lot of the comic books in fact my favorite is when he meets batman really good cartoon adaptation however not so good anyway here we have your four teenage mutant ninja tales of course Raphael, my favorite donatello leonardo michelangelo and then brings us right back to the top there's this little soft version of Raphael. gem knew that Raphael was my favorite and years ago she used to work at builder bear and she just randomly brought me this and i thought it was really cool and really sweet so i like to display that and that kind of brings this toy room tour to a conclusion i hope you've enjoyed and I, I hope this hasn't been too long and i hope you've enjoyed this detailed look inside the toy room at my collection so far this is pretty much i think where this toy room is going to end there's some spaces open for one or two other things professor xavier there's a couple of the batman 1997s that i still want to get my hands on but other than that we are at capacity there's some space down here maybe some more spider-man figures mentioned hobgoblin but again it's pretty much full right now so until the day comes that you can afford a bigger house with a bigger toy room maybe that day will come and then we'll have another tour inside the toy room but until then we've got some more videos coming and uh, my favorite time of the year is on the horizon christmas it's christmas time when i actually as a kid got a lot of these toys and uh, what we're going to be doing for our the i guess the month of december we're going to be doing some christmas special and i'm going to be taking a look at some of the most popular toys around christmas time or some toys that are just christmas related you'll see as we go on in the coming weeks but yeah i've got to deck the halls of this toy room get it all christmasy and then we're going to bring you some christmas toy fun coming in the next few weeks so make sure you check that out here on inside the toy room <music>